Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi, I want to welcome everyone to Live in Hope, Focus on Healing, part of the MSME Radio Network. My name is Kelly Alderton. I'm a wife, mom, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and author of Waking Up from MS, My Journey to Health, Healing, and Living Symptom-Free. My book details my over 30-year journey living with and beating MS naturally, so I hope you'll check that out. I'm really excited today to talk about this specific topic because it seems like it's a catchphrase or a tag word that everybody is talking about. And what I'm speaking of is inflammation. We have inflammation going throughout our bodies at all times. Many people do, and and that's why we have so many diseases now. We have so many people sick. And, you know, when we have inflammation in the body, that can simply be just a defense mechanism. You know, our body is responding to inflammation in our body, and that is exactly what is happening with MS as well. We have some sort of inflammation, our body is off or out of sync, and our body is going to try to fight that, you know, and we start having all these kind of symptoms. So it's really our immune system is recognizing that we have issues going on or damaged cells or irritants or pathogens or something that's going on in our body and it's trying to fight it. But of course, with MS, it's a little different because with the myelin sheath being uh, destroyed or damaged on our brain, then the signals start to be messed up, right? And so things aren't always working properly. But we need to really look at inflammation in our bodies, whether we have MS or not. It's so important to address inflammation on many levels so we can live a healthy life. Now, we have plenty of diseases that are caused by inflammation in the body. And again, MS is a response to that. You know, we can talk about asthma and ulcers and and rheumatoid arthritis and colitis and Crohn's disease and IBS and cancer. All these things can be linked back to inflammation in the body. So what we must do is respond to that. We must respond, respond to our body's and our immune system's response to that ongoing inflammation in the body. And there are several ways that we can do that. Now let's talk about first, what causes inflammation in the body? Stress, an unhealthy diet. Let's face it, our diets nowadays, people are busy, they're on the go constantly, you're just catching food on the fly. It's usually heavily processed. So, you know, when we have these unhealthy diets, you will see uh, your unhealthy diet unfolding in the health, in the way you're living your life. Lack of exercise is another thing that causes inflammation in the body. No matter what your condition is right now with MS, it's so important to try to do some sort of exercise. And here's where I will, you know, have people go and look at the MS uh, gym or the MS Fitness Challenge on Facebook. My friend David Lyons runs a great program and has exercises available for everybody with MS. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're disabled or if you're highly functioning now and doing well. He's got a program put together for you that you can address at any time for your condition. But exercise is very, very important to, um, you know, lessen that inflammation. But again, Lack of exercise will cause inflammation. Stress will cause inflammation. Guys, when we are stressed, our body goes into fight or flight mode. Again, to protect us, but the effects of stress on an MS body can be catastrophic. And I know many of the listeners tonight are understanding just what I'm talking about. When you're stressed out, you can feel symptoms coming on, whether it's numbness and tingling or dizziness or something with your eyes. Uh, We know that there is a a real cause and effect with, with stress 
and our bodies and causing inflammation. So then we start having these challenges. Another thing that causes inflammation is smoking. If any of you are smoking with MS, I mean, we've done talks before and there's been studies that even one puff of a cigarette can cause you to have a relapse. Smoking can cause you to have optic neuritis and other kind of eye challenges. Uh, so we got to really not smoke focus on getting off that, that causes wide range damage and inflammation in the body. Another thing we can have is infections. Um, Infections will also cause inflammation in our body. So what we have to do is if we're having an infection, try to deal with that naturally. I mean, I know people will go and, you know, maybe do some drugs or things like that. I'm I'm an advocate for anti-DMDs, anti-drugs, and really healing things at the root core through diet and supplements and exercise and, you know, positive thinking and different things like that. So we really need to look at all of those factors and what's causing inflammation. Another thing that causes inflammation is are you being exposed to d- different toxins, uh, chemicals in you know home and personal care products? Uh, what about bottled water? Is your bottled water you know there inherently you know have BPA or plastics in them or other contaminants in them? You know you you have to look at that. What about food allergies? Food allergies will also cause an inflammatory response in our body. Again making things go out of whack. You know, air pollution in the home, outside, again, another thing that puts our body in, in, it really has inflammation running through our body. And again, our body is trying to respond to help us when we have a known toxin or pathogen in our body. That is our body's response to it is to protect us. And and that's going to raise our inflammation levels. Now, the great thing, yes, Everybody has all these different things coming at us all the time, but we can make very specific choices uh, to help our bodies heal and repair. You want to make sure that you're having a healthy diet. Does your diet contain plenty of fruits and vegetables? Vegetables have antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory properties, which are so important to our healing. You know, so always choose a variety of colors and really look right now, especially to save for cost savings, look at seasonal products. We're in the falls. Now look for those falls, fruits and vegetables that are readily available and, and eat those as much as possible. You know, three to four servings of fruit a day, vegetables, four to five servings a day. Um, I am an advocate for juicing fruits and vegetables, especially for my family. I have children that are picky, and so juicing has been a great way for us to get all those fruits and vegetables that we need in one sitting. So that's something else you can do. Also, look at, you know, beans and, and whole grains, things like that. I'm talking quinoa, uh, oats, brown rice. Uh, I'm not an advocate uh, for refined white flour. I'm gluten-free as well. Gluten is definitely an inflammatory uh, food and it will show up in your body like that. Remember, we start to think about the foods that we're eating. When we're eating them, are they causing inflammation in our body or are they lessening inflammation in the body? You have to look at that. We know when people eat you know, white white bread or wheat, um, you know, things like that, your body's response, it, it automatically turns it into sugar. So again, it's causing inflammation. Also, become an avid label reader. We have to look at our labels. If you're eating any processed foods, look at the labels. I often say if you're shopping, shop on the outside of the market, you know what I mean? That's where you get your fruits and your vegetables and things like that. The outside, once you start going in the inner aisles, that is inflammatory foods that are foods filled with MSG and aspartame and other toxins that we simply have to avoid, especially with MS. We know aspartame and MSG can cause us to have symptoms and flare-ups or even I've had some people say they felt after they ate MSG that they were then diagnosed with MS. So obviously, Every person is different, but really listen to your body. And we try to give it all the food it needs to work properly. 
you want to really reduce your saturated fat intake as well. We have good fats, we have bad fats. Good fats, you know, when we start to talk about olive oil, we talk about um, avocado oil, even eating avocados or having, you know, cold water fish that, that are really filled with those omega-3s, eggs, things like that. But if you have MS, look at reducing your saturated fat intake because it will really help you. So you're going to want to stay away from milk and limit red meat and and you know cream cheese ice cream things like that again every time you're looking at your fork is it feeding inflammation in your body or is it going to be an anti-inflammatory to really help you another thing we need to look at is incorporating herbs and and spices into your diet turmeric is awesome anti-inflammatory ginger curry garlic cinnamon and also cbd you may not know about CBD, but our whole body has an endocannabinoid uh, system in our body with these receptors. And what we've been using now and what I've been using, my family have been using very successfully uh, are CBD oil and CBD drops. Also, some of my family is using a CBD infused coffee. And you can get so many benefits. It's such a wonderful anti-inflammatory product. Now, I'm not talking about a product with THC in it, and I don't advocate for that because, you know, we don't want anything that are going to have psychoactive, um, you know, effects on us. But CBD oil and drops from hemp are are so um are so beneficial to our body on an anti-inflammatory level. So again, think about those herbs. What herbs and spices can you add to your diet on a daily basis that can add to your daily healthy lifestyle to really amp up or ramp up those anti-inflammatory, really having your body uh, be affected at the cellular level. And these healthy herbs and spices and CBD can help with that. Another thing is drink enough water. Are you drinking enough water every day? chronically we are dehydrated as as a country and so i recommend drinking water throughout the day um, also in the morning maybe some water and lemon lemon that's a great way to flush out the toxins from overnight in your body and that's going to also help you um, again get that body and the inflammation down in your body. You also need to focus on staying away from sweets or eating sweets sparingly. And I, I kind of say that with a ha-ha because we're right in the heart of the holiday season. So what are we doing now more than ever? We're going to parties, we're drinking more, we're eating more sweets and, and sugars and fruits and, you know, um, you know, ice creams and things like that. Really watch your diet now, especially at the holidays with you know, the sugar intake, because what I've seen, and I, I know several of my friends with MS have, has seen right away, is as soon as they ate sugar, they started um, feeling some symptoms, maybe some numbness and tingling or aches and pains uh, in their joints. Well, that's a direct reflection of how your body is processing that sugar and it's causing inflammation. Your joints are hurting, you're numb and tingling again. Again, it's a direct response to what you're putting in your body, what you're absorbing. So we must be very, very mindful of that. But the good news is there's so many ways that we can combat the inflammation. Another thing is exercise. And I told you how to go about doing that. Another great way to combat uh, inflammation, and I'm not sure you guys are even aware of this, is, you know, what are you thinking about? Our stress levels, as we talked about, are, are you know, so important. If we, we have low stress levels, it's going to be less inflammation. So I highly recommend meditating. I do guided meditation online, and you can look up on YouTube and decide what one really resonates with you, and do that at least 10 minutes a day. Now, the reason I go with guided meditation is I've done meditation on my own uh, without any guided meditation, but what happens a lot to, of times to all of us, you know, our mind starts wandering. But I found once I'm in guided meditation, I'm able to engage and, and focus on the person's voice and what they're telling me, and I feel just a deeper uh, effectiveness from guided meditation. But again, you can pick and choose, and there's so many resources available online for you. I highly recommend meditating, and also even plugging into personal development. And why do I say personal development? Um, 
I am a um, Jack Canfield, uh, the success principles. He's also done um, the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, and he's one of my mentors. And I actually studied, and I am now a trainer for the success principles, and it changed my life. It changed my whole life with MS as well because I started to look at things differently. I started to expect different things, and I knew that I had a control, and I had the control over every situation I was in and how I responded. And when you're living with multiple sclerosis, we get a lot of things thrown at us. We're already stressed out. We're stressed out for things that are happening in our body that are not controllable. And so knowing personal development and really engaging in personal development, honestly, it saved my life because I started to think in a different way. I started to expect different things. And I just really started to focus on more positive things in my life. And that really helped me. And that will also help you. That will also help keep your stress level down. That will also help keep your body out of the fight or flight mode. So these are all things you can start doing day by day to help your body. All things you can do day by day to lessen inflammation and start to be, you know, the best you you can be while you're dealing with this. And like I said, just focus on ways to heal your body naturally. That's what I'm all about. That's how I'm now living symptom-free going on. This is my 15th year living symptom-free. By the grace of God, I have been um, given tools and resources and people that helped me on this journey. And that's what I hope to do for you as well. You know, you can definitely, definitely, you know, steer the ship on your own path with MS so you can have that healthy life. So if you want to reach out to me, please connect with me, Kelly Alderton on Facebook or Waking Up From MS on Facebook as well. If you want to check out my book, Waking Up From MS, My Journey to Health, Healing, and Living Symptom-Free, that's available to you on Amazon. If you want to check out some great products uh, for anti-inflammation, especially CBD products, which I am such an advocate for now as I'm seeing such great results in the MS community, you can also reach out to me at www successwithnewyou.com or just give me a private message and I can help you figure out a plan of attack for yourself on your own journey with MS. I hope this was a great call for you. I hope you'll join me next time. And remember, live in hope, focus on healing, and God bless.